a dollar. So you can use this dollar in many ways. You can go to a dollar store, pick up some stuff for a dollar, or you can use it at a vending machine. But how about I tell you that you can use this same dollar in a way that would be way more valuable than you ever think. The same dollar can be used to educate this poor child and help him to go to school and then lead a life that we all expect. Today I'm going to talk about how we can move slum children from the streets to schools. So, okay. Currently, one billion people live in slums around the world. And that one billion is 14% of entire world population. These slums are heavily populated areas of city characterized by poverty, lack of education, no running water, and other utilities. It is projected that by 2030, this slum population will be doubled to two billion if corrective measures are not taken. The only way we can shrink this slum population is through education. That's the only way we can shrink it and move people out of these slums. So knowing that education is a big problem for these slum children, some of us started a program a couple of years ago where we were building some schools and our cost was $20,000 per year. And at the time, we were helping only 125 children. From there, we get to a point that we are using same $20,000, okay, and helping 2,000 children. Currently, our cost is $1 per child per month. How we move from 125 to 2,000 children for the same amount of money is quite interesting. And today I'm going to talk about our innovative journey of moving these slum children from the streets to public school system on a mass scale. So <clears throat> if we look into current situation, just try to imagine, just take a moment, close your eyes, and imagine what will be a life of a child who has never learned to read or write. He has never been to school. He has never learned to add and subtract. He has never learned multiplication and division. And all he did all day long is to wandering around those slum streets. No education at all. Just try to imagine that, right? So <coughs> the question is, why these children are not going to school. There are a couple of main reasons. First and foremost, these slum parents are too busy to make their life and meet, right? So they do not have time to invest in their children's education, take them to school. Second, they also have a huge incentive to put them into work when they are quite young to generate some cash, okay? So these are the two main reasons. The third and the most important one is that here in U.S., we can take a lamppost and the school have to admit him if he, if he's a, he or she is in the right age, right? But not in the other part of the world. Most part of the world, before a child can go to school, he must have to have kindergarten level skills. And those skills are not easy for these slum children to give them to their kids because it costs money and time, which we which they never had, right? So when we started our program, as I've said, that you know it was costing us $20,000 for 125 children, it wasn't bad. But what we realized, very quickly realized, that the problem was huge, right? And we do not have unlimited amount of money. So we have to find some innovative way to bring our cost down so we can move this or we can have a impact on more children. How are we going to do that, right? I mean, 
<coughs> the biggest question was that how we can double the impact or multiply the impact without multiplying the cost, right? Any answers? Hard. Okay. So <coughs> we basically found a way to tackle the money problem. What we realized was that there was a public school system available for these children. So why they were not going to school? As I said, that even if these slum parents wanted to send their kids to school, the biggest problem was that their children were not prepared. They did not have kindergarten level uh, skills. So we decided that we will provide that skill to the children. That's where we changed our model. From a high cost, we moved to a low cost, and we said, okay, we are going to prepare these children to go into the public school system. So this is what we did. First thing was we started renting one room from these communities in these slums, okay? Since the rent was really cheap, our cost went down, okay? Not only that, it solved another problem. Most of these parents are very busy. They do not have time to take their children even a couple of blocks to the school. These rooms that we call our UPS learning centers were in those communities. So these children can just walk into those centers by themselves. Third, if they are missing, if they don't come to their school, teachers can go and basically round them up, bring them into the class. So that's how we solve this problem. But then the biggest problem was that how we get a commitment from parents and from children, right? We just kept thinking, and this is what we did. We basically bring these parents to our centers, explain them, right, what we are trying to do for their children. We introduce them life-changing ideas. These parents never had education by themselves, or maybe their parents had never seen a school. So education was a foreign idea for them. So we convinced them the long-term impacts and advantages of educating their children. Once we were able to convince parents, our next step is to get a commitment from a child to go to school every single day. Some parents here, they know what I'm talking about, right? This is what we are trying to get these kids, right? And we come up with an innovative way in our schools. Come on. Any help? Ah, okay, here they are. So <coughs> what we do is every child, every single day, before the class start, what they do is they take a pledge. They take a pledge that I'll go to school and become highly educated. I'll get a good job and live in a good house. I will be helping my parents, my brothers and sisters. I will always be respectful to my teacher and I'll make my country a great country. When kids recite this, it basically creates an imagination for their parents, for their neighbors, for entire community. It has a domino effect on, on the community and the children. Third problem we had was how do we keep our sponsors and donors engaged? It's the retention problem. This is the biggest problem every nonprofit has, is to get people to come in and donate and then keep coming back to donate more, right? So most of the nonprofits, they send an annual report or quarterly report. We don't do that. What we do is basically we keep a track of every single child that is coming into every center every day. So we have an attendance sheet. We create an email and send it to our sponsors every single day so our sponsor know which child has arrived into their school and is learning. So they know at every single point where their dollar is being is spent and how it is impacting the life. So the children, we round up from the streets. They are usually four to six years old. We bring them, we educate them for preschool, for kindergarten level, for one full year. Once they are ready and they graduate from our Do Peace Learning Centers, we help them get admission into the public school system, okay? 
once they go into the public school system, we don't end there. We actually follow up. So what we do, we bring them back for after school tutoring from grade one to grade five. What it does is that it keeps, it basically makes sure that those kids stay into their school system and they don't drop out. It also helps them improve their grades, right? So something, our innovative model that cost only $1 per child per month. And it is one of the lowest in anywhere. Something that was started with only 19 children and one room has transformed into 50 centers all over Bangladesh and 10,000 children enrolled currently in just four years. And we believe that this system can be implemented anywhere in the world. And since we have tackled all these problems from not being known to become the perfect feeder for the public school system in the country. So next time, when you use this dollar, remember this, the value of this dollar and the challenges that other people are having in other parts of the world. Thank you very much.